this should look very familiar because where we always start with patient prep, same stuff we hit every single chapter, but you know repetition is good. It's going to stick in your brain. So of course, patient prep, general patient position. We're going to talk about our IR and collimation sizes, our SID, our markers, our RAD protection, our patient instructions. That has not changed. TV screens on here. There we go. All right, of course, patient prep, guys. We gotta talk a little bit about artifacts again. Remove all the artifacts that you now have interest. You might be saying, well, wait a minute, necklaces. I'm doing else fine. How can a necklace get in the way? Well, some necklaces go very far down. So you can wear very long necklaces and chains. And as a general rule, you wanna go ahead and get rid of that because with an L spine, if you open up your collimation properly, it's gonna get up to that T11, T12 area. And if they have a long enough chain or necklace, it's gonna end up in the anatomy. You made a false assumption, you gotta repeat that x-ray. So always as a general rule, make sure they remove all that jewelry. Belly button rings as well. Make sure they don't have any belly button rings, any piercings going on. Make sure those elusive lead stickers aren't in the way. Does anyone else just really cringe at those? I used to drive me crazy, the lead stickers. Does that ever get you guys in the clinic? They leave the lead stickers on? Don't yeah, tell you? Jump I used to drive me insane, I hate that. They lead stickers. And then they're still on there, yeah, yeah, yeah. But clothing artifacts are a big one because just like KUBs, basically an L-spine is like a KUB, we're just collimating down, we center for it the exact same way. What do you remember from KUBs? What do you have to remove? Everything. 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 The pants, especially jeans, you know, buttons and zippers, all that needs to come off. But also, what else needs to come off? Underwear. 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 And I know sometimes we're not comfortable saying that, but it's vital, especially with our new digital technology, because what shows up on underwear? Elastic. The elastic bands. And that elastic band, sure enough, is gonna go right through that critical area of L4 and L5 and S1. It's gonna be in the way. So don't leave it on, you know, give them two gallons to put on, keep their modesty in check. Don't let them be running around with a bare butt behind them. You know, Don't be like some of these other techs. Always gave my patients two gowns. One in the front, one in the back. Protect that modesty. Make sure they're feeling secure so they can work with you. Um, of course, secure the positions in a positions in a designated manner, location. If they do take all their clothes off, make sure they can still access it. You know, in a bag, they can get back to it. Hopefully, no one swipes their clothes, which, believe it or not, has happened before. I don't know why, but you never know what people are going to do. All right, ambulatory patients. We know what that means, right? What's ambulatory meaning? Fancy word for what? Walking around, walking around, walking, talking patients. The ones we prefer, the ones that we want to do the most. That's mostly your clinic patients versus your actual EC and trauma patients. They would fall under your non-ambulatory. That's the ones that are going to come in in a wheelchair or a bed. They can't walk around freely. Of course, trauma being the most critical. And when we talk about traumas, we're never going to manipulate that patient, especially for spinal injuries. We're going to obtain our APs and our cross-table laterals, preferably on those, unless it's just impossible. So one thing I'll say with trauma on L-spine same type of care as you do with your C-spine, guys. If you know it's a back injury, a spine injury, anywhere on that spinal column, you should not be manipulating that patient, at least not by yourself. You need a team of people to help move them, especially from the stretcher to the table, if that's an option. And if that's not an option, we're gonna utilize those cross tables. We're not gonna move them around. Why? You know, if it's spondylolithesis, like we talked about. Remember how that disc is shifted forward and backwards? I move them. I might end up damaging some of those nerves and causing further injury, so we gotta be extra, extra careful. General rule, once again, if, they're, if there's a spinal injury, I'm just not gonna touch them. I'm gonna take my x-ray as they lie. What if they're on backboard, though? We still shoot through the backboard. Don't be going ripping that backboard out. You know, some people, you know, you ever see what people do with like the tablecloth with the glasses? Yeah. Rip it out, and the glasses are still standing. Yeah. I've seen people try to do that with the trauma board. Don't do that. It's just, not only do you look stupid, but you're gonna get yourself in big trouble. Yeah, don't remove the backboard until you've been cleared. Don't remove the, what else? Seat collar. Oh, yeah. Seat collar, if they have a seat collar on. All right, course guys, smallest IR that would demonstrate anatomy. So for L-spine, the majority of what we'll be using is our 14 by 17s, except for our sacrum and coccyx x-rays and L5-S1, we'll be using a 10 by 12. Now, unlike what you may see in clinic with L-spines, I'm sure you see these text through these L-spine x-rays, and you're like, oh, just leave it open, leave it open. Is that what they do? Leave it wide open? We do not do that optimally per the curriculum, nor should you as a tech. Spine is a very modeled area if we do not collimate closely. We want that spine to pop on the x-ray. We achieve that by a combination of our good technical factors with good tight collimation. 
Now, I'm sure some techs have told you, oh, well, they want to see the kidneys. No, they don't. For an L spine X-ray, they do not need to see the kidneys. <laughs> and let me tell you something else. You still see the kidneys even when you collimate in on the L spine because the kidneys are more medial. That's a lazy excuse. That's ridiculous. Don't let them tell you that. They just don't want to collimate. I had a tech tell me they stopped being stingy with the collimation. I was like, <laughs> and she just opened it and I was like, wham. And if any of my former students open it up, you tell them that my, my ghost and spirit's watching over them. I'm gonna be like, what yeah. a tail? Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I used to harp on them all, all the time. I said, I swear if you open that collimation on L spine, I'm gonna haunt your dreams. We'll come after you. Yeah, it's kind of bugging me that you know, I spent all this time collimating and then they open it and then they cut it to where <laughs> I had it. And I'm like, and what's really stupid about that is, yeah, they'll leave it open, but then they'll crop it anyway. Yeah, like, and I'm like, if you just point. That's just yeah. dumb. And by the way, that's unethical too, you're not supposed to do that. As a technologist, whatever you obtain on that image, you are required by law to send that in. Why? Because if you think you're being cheeky and cropping, like, oh, I wanna make it look fancy, you might inadvertently cut some pathology off that they were gonna be able to see. And by the way, they can actually go back in packs and restore the cropping and see if you cut something off. And guess who's in trouble? Wait, wait, wait. You're in big trouble. Can you can always restore crop. Mr. Fox said that just like edit it and like it doesn't go back to That's the one problem. You can't even trust me. Do it on packs all the time. You have, to have a, you have to have special access to do it. So there's different levels of access on packs. I used to be a super user at Texas Children's. I used to QC people's films all the time. I can always go back and see how they manipulated the film. If they're trying to hide stuff, which they did quite often. There's always a way. I'm telling you, with our technology today, there's always a paper trail. If you think you're hiding something, if you can get away with it, I promise you, someone can find out what you did. Even when you're like deleting images, I've seen text take the wrong parts, they've taken too many images, like, oh, I'll just delete it, they'll never find it. There's always a paper trail, guys. I was always able to restore deleted images on packs and on the machines. If you're a super user, you can get access to anything. You can't hide anything anymore. Keep that in mind, just do it right the first time. You make a mistake, you're a human being. Own up to the mistakes. It's better to own up to a mistake than to hide it. Because guess what? You're gonna take the wrong body part at least once. I've done that before. But what's the better option? I'm gonna hide it and hope no one finds it and get fired because I hid it? Or just say, hey, I just wanna let you know I accidentally took the wrong parts. I just wanna make sure you're aware. That's always the better thing to do, guys. Have you ever done that before? No. Um, if you, I'm telling you, well, if it's a pattern, yes. But guys, honest mistakes, we're human beings, we're gonna make mistakes, and you just own up to it, you're not gonna get in trouble. It's always the best thing to do, trust me. You got a question? Yes. So did you say sacral and coccyx stand back trial? Mm-hmm, I, I did, try. yes. But coccyx is small, isn't it? Is it we're, just gonna, we're still gonna collimate down. We're gonna talk about collimation in a minute. 10 by 12, you're gonna collimate down to just the coccyx. We'll get to that. All right, so what's really great about this chapter as well, guys, no 72-inch SIDs. Yay, one, SI, one SID, one number to remember. 40 inches only for all of these spinal X-rays. It shouldn't really say T-spine, and we already hit that, but that's included too. So L-spine, SI joints, sacrum and coccyx are all gonna be at that 40-inch SID. I like it when it's only one number. Of course, you know this is coming, guys. It's going to use everything to harp on. That will give you an anxiety attack. Keep saying that. Go drop that coffee again. Yeah, we'll drop that coffee again. Of course, guys, we know by now, and, and if you don't know by now, let's have a conversation in my office. You gotta have some like we have like a, like a lobotomy or something. But um, digital markers should never be used. Period. We never use digital markers, even though our techs use them all the time. Even though when we become techs, we're still probably gonna use them. Per the curriculum and per the registry, we always use physical anatomic markers. I don't care how fancy that question is, I don't care how fancy that answer is, that's always the correct answer. Right, period, yeah. <laughs> I had techs say, oh, you're that student. I was like, what do you mean? Talking about markers. Wait, what? The fact that you use them or did you forget them? No. Yeah. She's like, oh, you're that oh, student. Oh. And I was like, what does that mean? She's like, marker. See, you already get your name in the community. That's, I was like, dang. That's, <laughs> that's the way to do it. 
That is not cool. I'm so sorry. I... Better than like, how did that actually? At least whenever, you know, at least like, I don't, the Harris Health Partners, do they have all three initials or just two? Just two. At least it'll just become yeah. AS, you know. Um, and then if you work at like a place like TCH, they just use numbers. You don't even have your initials. Oh. You give it a number at TCH. All right, close collimation, optimal technique factors. That's going to protect your patient, optimize your image, prevent unnecessary radiation exposure. We're still going to use our shields, yes, even for our L spines. Now, it's very important, especially for your male patients, that you still use a shield on your L spine x rays. Females, you're only going to use it if you have an ovarian shield, which can be very difficult to place, as we talked about before. But keep in mind for L spine, we're penetrating the spine. We're using a much higher technique than even an abdomen x-ray. So do your part, cover up the gonads properly, still use those shields, even though they're fading away, still use your shields until they change that in the curriculum. So what I typically do, <laughs> bless you, I'll put my shield just right below my light on those L spine x-rays. If you don't want the shield in the light, that's gonna take away from your image quality. You just drape it <coughs> your legs right under the light. Over the groin, over the legs. All right, of course, explain your position, procedures, and breathing instructions properly. What's really great about this section as well, guys, respiration is going to be suspended during most middle to lower vertebral column projections. In other words, we're going to do this much like our abdomen x-rays. We're going to expire, suspend respiration. We're going to blow the air out. Hold it out, which is what we're saying there. A little thing about T-spine again, I know we already talked about this, but of course breathing technique is going to be superior for blurring your lung and rib anatomy. It's not going to apply to L-spine though. We don't have ribs to blur on the L-spine. So we're just going to use that expiration breathing technique. The AP lateral and oblique L-spine, we do suspend that expiration. Yes. Everything else is suspend respiration. Correct. Why does it make a difference to expire because the air might be lateral? You should know that. We talked about with the abdomen. Listen, but that's only in the thoracic, but I find that's fine. So, again, you should know that. Why do we expire in the abdominal area? That's a very important concept you should know by now. Why do we expire? Oh, that's because you move the air that might show up in the image. That's what I knew. Not for the abdominal area. There's a critical reason that we do that. Push yeah. It's a good question to ask. Do you know that? Yeah. Somebody want to help? Why do we expire our respiration when we have double respiration? To bring the diaphragm. Move the diaphragm out of the way. Correct. Because that can't obscure what we want to see. So we want the diaphragm to be high. We want to move it up. So then you're expiring. When you're the diaphragm goes down. Expiring it goes up. That's a good question to ask, but you need to know that. It's a very important thing to remember. All right, so what positions will we, will we be talking about? This section, of course, the AP, the lateral, the lateral L5-S1 joint or spot film. Lateral L5-S1 can sometimes be referred to as a spot film. The AP obliques, RPO and LPO, what do you notice? We're only talking about... Posterior. The AP obliques, a little less for your member as well. Even though we can do PA obliques, we never do. Main reason being the OID is going to be too severe. We're going to stick to the AP or posterior obliques only, that being the RPO and the LPO specifically. And then one more that we're going to talk about is the AP axial lumbosacral junction and SI joints, Ferguson method. AP axial lumbosacral junction is basically another way to see L5S1. We're going to look at it from an AP view. There is a way we can open that up in an AP by angling our tube a certain way. Very specialized view. I've actually never done that one before. SI joints, they come in quite often. As some of you have already formed. I 
Shall I explain? Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> well, most of you are probably going to be going cross eyed because there's a bunch of nerd trivia here. But so Gandalf the Grey sacrifices himself and dies after fighting the Balrog for ten days straight. He fights him and dies of exhaustion. He goes to heaven. See, in the lore of Lord of the Rings, Gandalf is what we would call an archangel. He's considered like an archangel, essentially, if you compare it to our stuff on Earth. That guy? Yeah, this guy right here. So the god of Middle-earth saw that his task had not been completed yet, so he reincarnated him to come back as Gandalf the White to take the place of Saruman the White, who had corrupted yeah. his role as the White Wizard. So Saruman... Who was the bad guy, if you watch the movies, one of the bad guys, he was supposed to be a noble, good wizard. He blasphemed the role, and Eru Iluvatar, who's the god of Middle Earth, reincarnated Gandalf to take over his role. Hmm. That probably went over a lot of y'all's heads, but. No. I thought, I thought so the white is a role, it's not. It's like, a role. Uh, I thought it was just a color. But. It's a, it's a, so you got four colored wizards. You have the white, the brown, the gray, and the blue wizards. So They're ranked by color. Oh, wow. Saruman becomes the gray, or Saruman gets killed. Yeah, yeah. And then he never he he never gets to go to paradise or heaven because he blasphemed his role. Okay. Is that Dumbledore? This is Gandalf. Dumbledore. No. You're talking about Harry Potter. No, no, it looks not like the same guy. This is Gandalf. This, this is the OG wizard right here. Yeah. Yeah. That that's the guy that plays Magneto. Magneto. Oh, yeah. That's OG Magneto. Yeah. yeah I love Magneto. The Magneto. That's OG Magneto. Magneto. So cool. real old <laughs> yeah, they are. Uh, like See, yeah. Harry, Potter, yeah. Harry Potter got its inspiration. But this was older than that. Yeah. Harry Potter, like, this is the OG fantasy right here. Yeah. 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 Anyway, oh, by the way, guys, I, after that crazy info session, <laughs> um, that's going to be your bonus question. There you go. Yes. I did, I did miss the two on here. We need the AP sacrum and coccyx and the lateral sacrum and coccyx as well. We'll be hitting those two. So you want to add those to your projections. By the way, if you want to know more about that stuff, just read the Cimmerillion. Well, what? What's Cimmerillion? What is that? That's like all the heavy lore of Lord of the Rings. It's kind of like they call it like it's like the Bible to the Lord of the Rings. It tells you all the beginning and in the end and in the lore in between. So very heavy reading the prequel stuff. Because you know movies cut out a lot. Now I yeah, think it all getting saved, right? And not up by the big evil, but I never know the whole backstory of what's going on. So should I read yes, it? The wizards are archangels, the elves are angels. If you compare them to the <clears throat> concepts. Should I read it or watch it? You can't watch the Cimmerillion. No, I'm saying like, should I read the, Lord of the Rings? all of it or should I watch it? You talk about Lord of the Rings? Lord of the Rings, Hobbit. Read the books. Read okay. The books are so rich. Some of the best reading you'll ever do if you like fantasy. Okay. Yeah. Heavy reading because Tolkien's very wordy and very heavy in his wording, but very rich, very rich. Like it, it's the movies are great, but just like with Harry Potter, the books are always best. It's just, it's just storytelling, right? Like that's all it is. Storytelling setup. It's, it's, it's hard to explain. It's very rich storytelling. It's, he paints a beautiful picture with his writing. I love his writing style. All right, back on the subject here. Um, APL spine. Now, half of you have done this in lab. The other half have not, but this is what we're always going to start with is that APL spine. I always try to say it's basically like a four fancy KUV. Why? Because we're going to collimate, we're going to bring the legs up to reduce the curvature of the spine, but our centering and positioning is essentially very similar to that KUV. Now you'll see I have it highlighted that this should be supine, but believe it or not, sometimes this can be done standing. Very rarely. I wouldn't recommend doing it because guess what? Most people for L spine have lower back pain, they don't want to stand. But every once in a while, a doctor may request that because he wants to see how the gravity is infect in, infecting the spine. But optimally, you're just that supine. <coughs> Excuse me, MSP is center of the midline, shoulders and hips in the same horizontal plane. Ideally, you know, it's kind of funny because the picture shows it differently. Ideally, you want the arms crossed on the chest. That's a comfort thing and also to help reduce curvature of the spine. But honestly, keep them by the side. That's what I do. Uh, but saying optimally you want to cross those arms over the chest. Now this we do want to do. People often forget this part on the positioning of the L spine. Make sure you're doing this in the lab. Make sure you do this in real life. You want to reduce the natural lordosis of the spine by flexing the hips and the knees, 
to place that lower back closer to the table. Now, as you may or may not have realized, if the legs are straight out while you're supine, your lower back will naturally have some OID because it curves. Excuse me, I have hiccups. How do you reduce that? We bring the knees up and slightly have the patient flex their waist. And that's going to reduce the curvature, make that spine nice and flat, so we get that good ideal AP view. Very important step from off the knee out right there. Big star on that, by the way. Probably going to see that again. Just a second. Could we just tell them to like lay their feet or get their feet flat on the table? In the yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, as long as you're bending the knees, that's the main thing. Bend the knees and slightly flexing the hips. perpendicular central ray. We're not going to have any angle on this view. Now, for the majority of your APL spines, by the way, sometimes referred to as lumbosacral exams. Please make sure you know it's called that as well because we're doing lumbar and sacrum together. Lumbar, lumbosacral exams, we're going to enter at the level of the iliac crest. That is the ideal way for doing all your APL spines. But if for some random reason, and this does happen very rarely, the doctor only wants the lumbar spine, we're going to be slightly above the crest at one and a half inches, but very rarely ever happens. We almost always do the lumbosacral and include both. So ideally, we're going to be at the level of L L4, which is the iliac crest, just the KUB, and we're going to collimate down to that spine only. Speaking of collimation, like I said, we must, and we'll say it again, we must, capital, capital M-U-S-T, we must collimate horizontally for lumbosacral AP hull spines. Why? Because the spine is an area of thick penetration, and we've got to be able to maximize the quality of that L spine. If we leave that collimation field open, it's going to model up the spine. It's also going to overexpose the patient. So, the book suggests, at minimum, an 8 by 17 inch collimation on that IR, or if that's hard to remember, basically at the border of the lateral psoas muscles is where you want to collimate. The tighter you can collimate, the better, actually. It's just gonna look better. If you're doing that lumbar spine only, once again, that's eight by 14, but I want you to focus on that first bullet point. Full AP, L spine, lumbosacral view, including those sacroiliac joints. By the way, I said you, the tighter the better, but make sure you do at least include the sacroiliac joints. You do need that on the evaluation criteria. So if you, like, if you go way too slap happy on the collimation, you might clip those a little bit. I'll be proud of you for the tight collimation, but you gotta have the SI joints too. Now SID, we did talk about 40, but optimally, and write both these down, optimally it is recommending a 48 inch SID to reduce some of the distortion and open the disc spaces more, but if you just want to do 40, it's still okay. That's what most of your texts are going to do. So 48 inch optimizes the overall visualization of that APL spine. It's going to open things up better for you and reduce magnification. But we can still use 40. And I've always personally used 40 as well. So don't feel like you have to do 48 inches. It's a very subtle change. Do all your texts have the patient bend their knees? Or they just have them flat? No. They should be bending those knees. Mm -hmm. You went wrong. It also gives your patients some more comfort, by the way, especially if they're lower back surgery. So, um, like on the test, are you going to put 40 to 48? If I say what's the optimal SID for APL spine, you would say 48 inch. But if I just say what's the typical, I won't put both, by the way. I wouldn't put 40 and 48. That'd be kind of cruel. But the one you're mostly going to use is just the
All right, so what are we trying to see? Of course, well, we gotta see those lumbar bodies, all five of them. We see the, as open as possible, intervertebral disc spaces, the interpedeculate spaces, that's the space between the pedicles, by the way. Try not to say that one 10 times fast. Interpedeculate. Interpedeculate. That one's a mouthful. Interpedeculate. 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 The laminae, the spinous processes, the transverse processes as well. And you must see, it gives you a range, at least one, but preferably two, of the lower T vertebrae. So at the very least, we must see T12 in its entirety. But I would say optimally, you want to see both. At least see both. If you're centered correctly, you should be able to see both. So this one's showing only T12. I feel like they probably collimate the top and bottom a little bit too much. They open up a little bit more and get T11 and T12 on that x-ray. And yes, you do need to see both the sacrum and the coccyx. This is an AP L-spine, lumbosacral exam. We need to see down to that coccyx, so be careful. Make sure you're centering at the iliac crest, not the as is or that you're not steering too high above the crest, you're gonna cut off that vital info. So very similar to a KDB, you know you got it spot on when you can make out the tip of the what? Pubic synthesis. Pubic synthesis, just like a KDB. Very similar. And then some of the pelvic bones as well. This is some beautiful collimation. Like this, I, I love this right here. This is how you wanna collimate for an L-spine to optimize it. By the way, all those texts saying you can't see the kidneys, kidneys are right here. You can still see the kidneys. Mm -hmm. the kidneys are very close to the spine. That's a pitiful excuse. Don't point that out to them, by the way, unless you're just feeling really snarky. I wouldn't recommend doing that. <laughs> they're, they're dead wrong about that. You had a question, John? Yes. Uh, so if we clip the SI joint, would that be a repeat? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good question, yes. As part of the evaluation criteria is you do need to see both those SI joints. And that's something you don't want to do anyway, because if you're if you're collimating that close, you're going to end up probably cutting off some of the transverse processes as well, which you do have to see. They're very close to lining up with those SI joints. Mm -hmm. All right, evaluation criteria: area from the lower thoracic, that being the T11, T12, down to the sacrum. X-ray beam once again must be collimated. When we're talking about an optimal APL spine, it must be collimated to at least the lateral margin of the psoas muscles. And then, yes, part of the evaluation criteria is the fact that you remove that underwear from the patient because we want no artifacts, specifically elastic, of that patient's underclothing showing up on that x-ray. Because most often that elastic will be going across right here. It could be covering up something that we want to see. It could be distorting that image. Or like, for some reason, the ones I always got, they had some kind of Victoria's Secret logo right here in the middle. Mm -hmm. Or some kind of like hearts and charms and stuff. I was like, that's what Victoria's Secret is right there. It shows up on the x-ray. Oh, that was a pretty good joke. Come on. It's not even Monday. <laughs> I'm getting a smirk on that one at least. To the sacrum or to the coccyx? To at least the sacrum. Yeah. Preferably the coccyx as well, but sacrum is acceptable. That's what Victoria's Secret is. It shows up on x-rays. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone wants to know what's, what's the secret to Victoria. That's her secret. She shows up on x-rays. I'm really glad we don't have a Victoria in this class because she would have been like, it's the time, really. Have you heard that song? Who lives in Ohio? Who lives in Ohio? <laughs> yeah. Making money off of Bill's ID. <laughs> All right, we will stop there today, guys. <laughs> I John's being Let's take a quick time. break and take about 10 minutes. Come right back at 9.05 and we will divide up to our groups and do our little group project together. Mm -hmm. We actually probably will wrap up the majority of the rest of this positioning by Friday. We've actually got a lot going in this chapter, so. Okay, so if we take the test now,